What's, What's up, up guys? guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of The Rec Podcast. The Rec Podcast. It's Thursday, 4 p.m. as always. We are here. Quatro, quatro, quatro 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 what if we ever change our time? Have you ever thought about that? I actually have. Like, what if we ever changed it from like 4 p.m. to like... Because I know some podcasts they'd be releasing like during the mornings and stuff like that. You know the only problem with that is like I'm in school. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and then there's work and stuff like that. And I don't even think people would watch it because like everyone's like at school I or at work. I feel like posting it earlier is sometimes a good thing just because like you said, like it's already out there all the day. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah. But, but I feel like it is more convenient for us to post. Yeah. So I feel like for now we should keep it just because it's been, wor- it's been working, you know? Yeah, it has been working. It's been future, working for a year and a half mind, now. So. I wouldn't mind changing the time or even the it's day. 3 p.m. <laughs> Imagine you're just one hour down. <laughs> no, because 3 p.m. I'm only I only like posting it early, um, at four because we're able to post it. Now, like, here's the real our question. Schedules work. Are, would we ever switch the day? I just said that. The day. I just said that. Really? Yeah. Well, then I did not pay attention. I zoned out. Me neither. I didn't pay attention. Did I not? Did I say that in my head? I think you said that in my head. Wait, guys. Comment down below. We might be like a little... Me and him might be a little slow today. Maybe we zoned out. Wait, also, I have to apologize in advance. Number one, my microphone is oddly built today. And it's like making me feel like lopsided. Lopsided. Also, we have a monitor, a key. So if you see us looking a lot... I'll here, try to look over here, monitor. but accidentally I keep looking over here. And I'm, I'm on my Ruslan today and I'm going to be... I'm going to switch it to Gabe really quick. Boom. There you go. Yeah, guys. Live. Uh, Daniel Souza is not... He- I was going to say Danny, then I said it say Daniel. Yeah. Daniel Souza is not here today because he's fake just kidding he had practice oh, come on. i'm just kidding he had practice. <laughs> so um we decided to come up with this alternative and um, let's see if it works out yeah but yeah should we introduce the episode yes because we can, it can... was like sitting here and we like did not talk about why he's here so you can take it away okay um pretty much this week we decided that it would be really fun to have my brother on as a guest however instead of bringing like you know his testimony and like blah 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 um we felt in our hearts well Nick and I to ask him to bring a message or a word because fun fact Gabe is actually a really good preacher guys the Holy Spirit uses him a lot gives him a lot of beautiful messages and I just feel like the Lord definitely had something to say through your life for this week so that's pretty much it go ahead introduce yourself of course and then um t- are you gonna keep your headphones on just asking probably okay. probably so he's gonna have his headphones on because he's listening to our microphones I'm really interested I'm excited for today's I read, I read his preaching I have I yeah. It. I told uh-huh. Ania. I told Ania guys is like that she had already ready, and I want to like keep it a surprise like for me because I want good. to get the first reaction. Eh, sorry. And let's see what happens. You I'm know. Yawning. But I'm I excited apologize. for today. And Gabe, let the Lord use well, you, yeah. my friend. Go ahead. So yeah. start off by introducing yourself. Who are so, you? Yeah. Uh, f- speaking of uh, last episode that was I was on, uh, they told me to introduce myself, and I was like, I'm Gabe, and I didn't really have anything to to say. So this time I wrote it down so I know how to introduce myself this time. <laughs> so hi, I'm Gabe, the sound guy. I'm of age. <laughs> old enough. Uh, some things about me is I do sound, I do lights. Um, production is my like interest. Passion. Like, passion. Uh, I'm also a musician. I play the guitar. Uh, a little bit of piano and, and a little a, a little, little bit, bit you play so much piano a little he's bit phenomenal and he's self-taught little bit. <laughs> yeah very self kind of semi self yeah so he does it in school semi pro i feel like your teacher teaches you the basics and then you just build off of that yeah i'm learning more music theory off of him mm-hmm. but yeah and my main instrument is guitar if you guys didn't know my sister is ania An- ania <laughs> my <laughs> Nick is my brother-in-law, brother soon to be brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, stop! I mean, we're gonna think we're getting married like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I'm just an average guy that likes sound and lights. I'm just and a girl in the village doing all right. Guy. Sorry, I had <laughs> to say it. And yeah, that's pretty much me. And I'm also a little like shyish. A little. Oh, okay, yeah. let me explain. Gabriel is not shy. He's just shy around new people. And when he's doing new things, like right now, his leg is shaking very badly because <laughs> oh, he's, he's very nervous. It, I'm though. the can't same. I'm the same. Yeah, but don't, you're don't less than him. It. No, because I, even, I, I am. Even, no, no. Can I explain why? Mm. Even when you are shy and like whatever, you still put yourself out there. Gabe will just be quiet. Like, yeah. 
Okay. Exactly. No. But not you. You'll actually communicate. Fun Gabe is scarce guys, to communicate. In the old like studio that we recorded in, if you pay attention, like under the table, shaking. My my foot's like it's like you guys can't see on the camera, but my foot's shaking like this the whole time when we had guests because I was so nervous. Yeah. So Especially in the beginning when we were recording. Right. And I still have camera shy to this day. I say even to this day I have camera shy. But <laughs> camera shyness, you mean? Camera shyness, uh-huh. but it's gotten better now. But Gabe, I'm with you, bro. But yeah. So, but Gabe is very, very, very shy. But when you get to know him, he breaks out of that <laughs> to an extreme. Like, there's a lot of people like, oh, yeah, I'm really shy unless I know you. Gabe is the definite. I've never met someone who fits that so well as my brother does. And it's bad. Like, he, <laughs> he transforms into a different, a good person, obviously. But it's really funny, the transition. So, Gabe, I want you to know that you can be calm. Breathe in, breathe out. The Holy Spirit is already in you. He got you. You don't have to be nervous. You, you got, got it, this. I'm don't so worry. proud of you. Can't wait to see what you're going to bring. So let's, let's go ahead go, and begin. Go. So um, the our like topic-ish for this episode is about like humility and pride and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I've somewhat struggled with. Not really. Yeah, I sh- somewhat struggled with it. But I was able to like overcome, con- overcome it and realized it was bad <laughs> and yeah and i want to start off this by reading just a few verses about proverbs mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> reading, um, it's okay, bro. verses in proverbs uh-huh. uh actually i actually forgot my bible today <gasps> sorry i was waiting for you to put the camera <laughs> come on <laughs> the man read his bible man. You want any you can explain why i forgot it why why Oh, can I actually say it? I don't have the video. <laughs> I walk into my brother's room. So Nick goes to pick us up, right? And Nick, um, he's like, okay, I'm outside. So I go to my brother's room to tell him, like, hey, Gabe, let's go. I get there, and he's on his bed. I'm, okay, he's sitting on his chair at the edge of his bed with the paper in front of him. I'm assuming you're reading over it. No, I actually was doing something on my computer. Uh-huh. And then I was like, you know what? I could do this later, and I'm tired, and I got to record this episode. So I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> That's what you did? Dude, he literally was like this. On my bed. Like, literally on like on the bed. Like, like, yeah. On his bed. Literally sitting on the chair with his head on the bed. And I was like... So I'm on FaceTime with Nick, and I flip the camera, and I'm like poking Gabe, and he will not wake up. And I go, Gabriel? I thought it was a joke. He thought it was, <laughs> <laughs> he, I thought it was a thought, joke. And then I'm like, Gabriel? And he's like... Huh? <laughs> and he gets up, he's like... What? Yeah. And then, yeah. But anyways, that that's why he up. forgot his Bible because he was yeah. asleep. But and it's yeah. okay. All right. So Don't Proverbs it, eleven two. Pro- pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs thirteen ten. Uh, pride leads leads to conflict. Those who take advice are wise. Proverbs twenty nine twenty three. Let me just. Can I do some background music? No, because I already found it. Oh. <laughs> 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 and pride leads to hum- humiliation while humility brings honor these are just like simple verses that i got just to because it shows that the bible is straightforward that pride will like drag you down uh-huh. it's not gonna be it's not good for you and it's just like straight to simple so bible just clearly states that pride is bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty much it and i wanted to talk about more about my like childhood and like about me and like what like what i had to do to like kind of overcome pride and what not over yeah mm-hmm. i'm talking more of like what um how do you say this like what i had a lot of opportunities okay. to yeah. be prideful and, and how, how that i kind of worked through that and how i had to choose not to be prideful and how mm. it, it was affecting me can i say one thing i like how you said you had to choose not to be prideful because in the end of the day, it is a choice. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, go ahead. I was about to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That pride is being prideful and like is a choice, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's me. Wait, can, <laughs> I, can I explain that a little bit? Yeah, you can. So, I feel like a lot of times it's like, oh, like these situations make me prideful. But I feel like we can choose how we act and we mm-hmm. can choose how we position our hearts. Because if we let the Holy Spirit guide us through through a circumstance, let Him guide us through a situation, at the end of the day, we're not going to feel prideful. Yeah. Or if we know that a situation is going to make us prideful, we choose to not do it, you know, in order to keep our hearts clean and keep ourselves focused more to Jesus. Is that kind of no, your it makes, point? Yeah, yeah. Perfect sense, yeah. It makes perfect sense. So, yeah, we're going to start in um third grade, actually. Third grade? So, something like in third grade, 
I was like the fastest boy in class. I was the all biggest boy. Bi- biggest as well. He was always huge. I was huge. Oh my was, gosh, man! You know, I was like I thought I was all that pretty much in third grade, <laughs> <laughs> and then I even beat my teacher in a race. Yeah, because he, he let me, obviously. Oh, okay. Now oh, I know okay. he beat me. Yeah, because he let you. Yeah. After that, I was like, I was the fastest. I was like, oh, I'm the fastest. I'm, you know, since the beginning, I thought I was like all that, for example. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. That's in third grade. And then in fourth grade, which I switched schools and I uh, joined the band. And I'm a musician. I love music and all that. And I started off playing the flute. And then during a, like tryouts, not mm-hmm. tryouts, mm-hmm. we had like a a test like a music test and like whoever got the best scores like got in the band pretty much oh like an audition yeah, yeah but yeah try it uh-huh. and then i remember uh he explained to us that there's a well like for example 50 people over there but only like 30 is going to get in because mm-hmm. you know space yeah, and all that yeah. and we had the test and then my teacher was like uh there's limited spots and he pretty much like counted us out was like this row would make it in but you guys would not mm-hmm. and i told myself nah that's not me. I'm going to make it in the band. <laughs> but anyway, I got home. I studied the, the paper. I remember just like struggling. Like, what does this mean? Like, what am I supposed to study? And I was like confused on what I was going to study. And then boom, the, the test came. I got the best score in the... You got the best score. I got the best score. And I, can I just say one thing? I remember you practicing. My brother learned how to play the flute in one day. Pretty in much, yeah. One day. I'm like... Insane. Musically talented. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, like it's true. My brother is very much, I don't know, like you just have a gift for music and I feel like anything that you put your, I'm not saying this to like <gasps> lift you yeah, up, but yeah, I, yeah. I also do want to give you honor, like where credit, where honor is due, you know, like Appreciate you it. are so good at what you do. Yeah. And I'm so proud of how the Lord uses you and how you allow him to use you because you know this too. Anything he puts his hand on, he gets in two days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's literally that the Lord has definitely like given to me. Uh-huh. I'm like a, I love technology as well since as a kid, like playing with computers and all that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm the type of person who will just like figure anything out. Yeah. Like they will like, for example, I'm going to give an example of my church that there is like uh, in the, the kids room, for example, the computer's not working or the microphone's not working. And then most of the times I have no idea what's going on. But you somehow make it work. I somehow make it work. Yeah. And instead of like being, oh, I'm all that, I think, thank you, Lord, for this. I, that's I try to switch my mentality. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's like supposed to be more in the future. In mm-hmm. the um, okay, the so don't, don't spoil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll continue what you were saying. So yeah, and Sorry then that I cut you off. Fourth, it's all good. Fourth grade, I got the best um, best, 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 best best score. I was first chair in fourth grade. I was a, like, the best in the flu and probably mm-hmm. not to be, <laughs> but probably in the whole band. <laughs> and yeah, and then I was like, oh, I'm so good. But the thing is, I never practiced. I'm gonna be real. Really? I barely practiced. And so I... Home, you mean, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just had that natural gift of, like... (laughs) I don't practice and I'm good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah. And then that's where, like, could have started getting prideful. Fifth grade comes along. And during the middle of the year, and I'm pretty sure Nick knows more about this stuff, but with, uh, like, the band, you have first chair, second chair, third chair. Yeah, yeah. Pretty Mm -hmm. much whoever is the best in your section is first chair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty much in fifth grade, I was so fourth grade is their own band. Fifth to eighth grade is, is separate bands. Yeah. Okay. And then when when I was in fifth grade, I got first year already, in uh like during the middle of the year. Which is crazy. Better than like the eighth graders over there. Oh, that's right. Like yeah. If, and I remember oh, I was about to say your teacher's name. <laughs> I was about to say. It. I remember your teacher. He would always like lift you up. Yeah. Always. There's a video on YouTube as well. <laughs> <I'm looking laughs> up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yo, shout out to whoever that teacher no, is. He had, he had I'll show teacher you guys later. Uh-huh. But yeah, and then, yeah, but I started thinking, I'm in fifth grade. <laughs> These, yeah, I mean, there's like, it kind of shows that I'm better than them. Mm-hmm. But like, there's no way I'm better than them, you know? Yeah. Doubted and I, I, w- I had this little like doubt in myself. I was like, yeah, I'm good, but like, not all that. Mm-hmm. I have to, like, I have to be better, pretty much. Mm hmm. And then it's like sixth grade, quarantine, seventh grade, eighth grade. When like did you start playing saxophone? Seventh grade. Okay. Then I played saxophone and like I knew I was good. So like I didn't I wasn't prideful, but like I still had fun. So like that was nothing mm-hmm. relating to prideful. But since the beginning I've always been like good at what I do. Mm-hmm. That's it. No, 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 okay, I, don't worry. <laughs> we know how you're talking. Good. And then seventh grade, I started on um, Seventh grade, he started playing. Volleyball. Volleyball. Yeah. And I picked it up 
quick <laughs> like always <laughs> like yeah. always is crazy <laughs> and i picked it up quick i was one of the best in my team and then i wasn't too prideful because i wasn't the best as well i always kept the mentality that i wasn't the best mm-hmm. and yeah so i always swear to keep myself in check and in eighth grade i also you know, had like the similar team but I was more prideful because I was the best. Not one. Of, I was one of the best. There's one guy who's my competition. Shout out to you if you know who you are. <laughs> and so, like, where am I going with this? I'm just kind of explaining my, like, uh-huh. life story. But yeah. I wasn't always, Um, I tried to always keep myself in check. Right. Because I didn't want always to be too prideful, you know? Mm-hmm. And actually, I should have said this in the beginning, but something as a child me and my sister we have um we've been like church people uh whole life christians we've been christian christian up in the church yeah we've, been in the church. we've always been in the christian family uh-huh. and uh something that i've like my dad especially he's like told me is like the story of like when satan fell from heaven oh yeah that's true yeah wait can i explain one thing Same. out my house what we do every week nick has been has done it many times with my family is we have how do you say it in English? Uh, we call it puto doméstico, which means you domestic. guys have like just have like little services. Like yeah, call, it's like a yeah, it's called weekly culto services. Dom- yeah, so services. in Portuguese it's called culto doméstico, which means domestic service. service technically, yeah. so it's literally. I don't even just know like, if that's a thing. Domestic service I don't know, in English. but yeah. it literally is in the name. It's just a little service that we do in family. My dad will preach. He'll bring us a message, and then yeah. So continue. Fun fact: I just realized what domestic means. You just found out what domestic means. Domestic. <laughs> what do you, means okay, what do you mean? Okay, whenever we go on a flight, why do you think it says domestic flight? Uh, I don't pay international. attention. International. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and then, it's like you didn't pay attention to below the horizon. <laughs> below the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> if you know you're That's a, a story one. for another time. Okay. Yeah. That's a story yeah. for another continuing, time. Uh, <laughs> continuing on. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, my dad is like always preaching about like Lucifer and like why he fell and yeah, one like main part why lucifer fell was because he was prideful mm-hmm. you know if hey, you saw the story of how yeah i was <laughs> literally about to get there. but say sorry it's a big sister in me i need to shut up <laughs> lucifer uh he was an angel of created by god he was like he was like a uh, worship leader mm-hmm. worship leader mm-hmm. he was like I don't, I don't really know what he was but i know he was like a lot like he was the he best was really of the good best. what he does. Yeah. He's the chief musician. And he musician. was like the best of the best of the angels, the yeah. most beautiful one. Yeah. The mm-hmm. most, All that. most beautiful voice, everything. And then out of nowhere, like something like clicked in him and he started being like, Yeah, I'm all that and I want to be more than God. And like, he said, I want to be like God. I want to be like God. Be like God yeah. And he was like, Because like, I imagine at least, like, if you see yourself as like, Yeah, I'm the best of the best, I should be even better, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. you should work like a cristiano ronaldo mindset kind of yeah well, well here's the thing we have to be we have to be like be able to differentiate these things because i feel like there's a i think people need to understand the difference between confidence and pride right because some people also think confidence is pride and that's not true it's okay to be confident in yourself right it's okay to for example be like i'm good at what i do however you just can't let that get into your head to the point where like i'm better than you i'm best at this i'm best than that and you start playing like this like very um you just start bigging yourself up so much to the point where like no one else matters but you Mm. so i think that's why people have to understand like there's a difference between confidence and pride and i think people have also mixed up the meaning of both of them um so let's just also be careful with that yeah so yeah so well like i think satan did he started being thinking he was all that and wanted Mm -hmm. to be like god and god was like in heaven there can't be this like prideful thing because prideful is a sin like Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. you know and then he fell and he's still falling in a bottomless pit which says in revelations 23 (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i think it's so interesting that the devil was so convincing in his mindset that he took one third of the angels with mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. like that's so mind-blowing to me you know what i'm saying i'm not going to get into it now because i know that's not the topic but it's it's crazy that i don't know i just think it's so wild that he tried to be like god you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying instead of worshiping him instead of 
acknowledging like wow i have the 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 privilege the privilege there we go the mm -hmm. privilege of being an angel of being with him worshiping him 24 7 and that's what he decided to do i think it's so mm -hmm. crazy how pride takes over yeah. you know yeah and then as a kid when i was like learning about this stuff i kind of clicked in my head is like if pride like caused satan to fall down and he's still falling down the bottom plate which says in revelations uh 23 then like what could that do to me you know mm. if satan like the devil like i don't know how to like to put it in words just uh-huh you know it's right like something i can't explain like why you know not why <laughs> i'm just kind of like how <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. like how yeah how? and like it's like yeah that can't be me i can't do that you know mm -hmm. So that's like I guess where like my mentality to not be prideful started. Mm -hmm. So yeah, now we're gonna go to um, the point where I was the sound guy and like I started the sound guy journey. Mm -hmm. How old are you? I was twelve, I believe. Twelve, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, th three years. Oh wow, it's been a five <laughs> minutes. Been four years? No, yeah. it's about three to be years. four years in January sixteenth. Wait, no. Oh, it's three. Three years. Actually, let's uh get into my um uh, like volleyball. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk yeah. about so, volleyball. And then uh so. Sorry, I'm jumping all over no, the place. No, no, Gabe, Gabe, you're, you're good, bro. But in, uh, so my eighth grade season ended. I was somewhat prideful, thinking I was all that kind of confident, kind of prideful, kind of mm -hmm. mixed in between. But then uh, ninth grade came in, and I switched schools. Because you went to high school? I went to high school. No, but like I also switched towns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> all due respect, I love you guys, but my team... He like, sucks. Horrible. <laughs> I saw him. We were in the same school. I saw a lot of their games. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Oh, man. I'm With, sorry. With uh, humbleness, I was carrying that team oh. on my shoulder. <laughs> that, no, that's heck. Because <laughs> uh, it was a, fr a freshman team, right? Yeah. And then I was like, what the heck? Pretty much. <laughs> And I, my ego started skyrocketing at this really? point. Really? Kind of, yeah. Cause like, yeah, I mean, because you were carrying the team. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh -huh. you know? yeah. And then I joined JV. And then Which I started... crazy, playing freshman and JV. Mm -hmm. And then I started talking too much. Like, yeah, I'm all that, y'all. <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> I, I, was, I wasn't like that. I'm, like, exaggerating a lot. Okay. Yeah. But, and then I was just kind of like... And every time I played with freshmen, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be here because y'all pretty much in my head. And I want to be with the JV, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to, when I was with JV, you realized that you were not all that. I realized I was not all that. <laughs> that <laughs> gave me a pretty quick. He me. did. Yeah, humbled pretty JV was good. No, I, I was. It's just that I think I was talking too much, and then right the pride. See, it says in the Bible that, uh, like Proverbs eleven two is like I forgot, but <laughs> it's okay. You can pull it up. Pretty much, it just says that like pride will like bring you down and it will corrupt you. Yeah. Yeah. You can pull it up. Oh, no, I, 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 I got, like, got a bunch of, bunch I mean four. <laughs> a bunch I mean four <laughs> Bible verses? Mm -hmm. gotcha. Proverbs 11, 2. Yeah, like pride leads to disgrace, for example. Mm -hmm. If I would kept that uh, prideful mentality, I would probably become disgrace. Mm -hmm. It says in the Bible, but humility comes with wisdom. And I was humble and I got wiser because of that. I, mm -hmm. And I feel like when you have wisdom, that's when you're able to become humble. That's when you're mm -hmm. able to ignore pride and not fall into that exactly yeah and that's something i loki had to learn as well to um, be humble and yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thank you. and yeah so now i was gonna go to my uh, sound guy wait i have a question i don't know if i can say this Are you oh guys I Okay. Okay. We're back. Sorry, oh, we, Sorry. we were <laughs> muted. Oh, yeah, no. So you guys saw me talk for no reason. Sorry. Okay. I had a question. He's not going to talk about it. So I'm not going to talk Probably about not. it. Probably not. I don't okay. know. We'll see where the Lord takes okay. it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I started uh, doing sound when I was 12 years old. I, uh, so it was like this. So my mom recently joined the sound team and my, my sister and my dad were worshiping in the worship team. And then I remember it was on a Monday, not Monday, Easy. Wednesday services. Like Wednesday services, I went to Wednesday services because my mom was there. Mm. And then sometimes you guys would play mm -hmm. and sing. And then I started like, it came to a point where I was like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, yeah, I went to like service and all that, but like. You didn't do anything. Yeah, I was like, I'm pretty much like wasting my time here. That's what I pretty much thought. Uh -huh. And then 
uh, one, and I was like, decided, I decided that, yeah, you know what? I know the sound team needs a little bit of help. So let so me. Actually, that was ask. a story that put you. you know, I Remember asked. it was on a Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. That, that's... Gotcha. And then on a Tuesday, we had a meeting with a bunch of people. It was worship and sound team. Worship and sound team. And then you went because me and my mom and my dad were on yep. the team. So you came with us because you weren't going to be home alone at night. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, because I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask past my pastor mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it was like the most like at this point my social skills were lacking because quarantine and all that yeah mm -hmm. so i was like really nervous and like i even cried because I, I was so cute though you weren't i don't think you were on the team yeah, no, you weren't yeah. even on the he team was at in this point. Church, yeah I think. he was, was he it? was at church but he wasn't on the team yet oh. really it was like august 2021 no, but I had I was just visiting the church at that time. Oh really? Oh, I thought you were already a member. No, no, I was yeah. already I was visiting. Then I asked my uh pastor, I was like, Hey pastor, uh, I wanna help out. And he's like, Oh my gosh, that's so good and then I started talking about it. And yeah, I was like, Yeah. And then yeah, so and then <laughs> I started off Okay. Yeah. So I have a sound guy at our church. Shout out, can I say his name? I think so. Shout, Shout out, out to Sam. Sam. We love yeah, you, Sam. Man. <laughs> Best friend, I love yeah, you so you're my much. Bestie. I love you, Zay. And yeah. I cannot wait for your baby to be born. That is gonna that be too. That you're gonna adopt that kid. Yep, that's my literally that's my child already. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, you gotta be his the kid's like godfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Zay, he was at that time he was extremely hard headed and probably hard hearted, hard hard hearted, hard hearted, hard hearted, hard hearted. You know I thought and of. Then, <laughs> you know I thought of. <laughs> my cousin, she can't speak English. Uh, she pronounces okay. it really funny. And yeah, and then he was uh. He literally asked my mom, I was like, what is a kid doing here? I remember that. Uh -huh. He literally went up to her and was like, what am I going to do with a kid here on my sound table? <laughs> and then my mom was like, don't worry, he'll stay. Like, he's got this. He got this. And then I started building on to, um, like, I started going on Tuesdays, on practices, on so services, learning the sound, learning the lights, and doing all that. And if, if I'm being honest, it, it's pretty hard, especially for someone who has no experience Oh, it's, it's hard, it's yeah. Difficult. It's hard, yeah. I made a bunch of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mistakes. A lot of you mistakes. You learn from your mistakes, I guess. That too, yeah. yeah. I learned from my mistakes. I realized what I did wrong. And about, yeah. And then my mistakes and all that, that what truly like kept me in check, not to be prideful as well. Because mm -hmm. actually I was thinking about it today and like yesterday, like kind of preparing for this. And I realized... If it wasn't for all that hardship and like all that hard, like all that time working, mm -hmm. I probably would have been like, yeah, this is easy. Like, yeah, I'm better than you. Mm -hmm. but no, it's because I realized that it, you don't get it like this, you know, mm -hmm. especially someone who doesn't know anything at the beginning. You have to truly like dedicate yourself. You have to truly work on yourself. You have to like dedicate time to study. Mm -hmm. So like EQ and lights and yeah, it's hard. And it took me what, like two years to like somewhat understand it mm -hmm. wow yeah no it took a long time i know you're always watching videos on sound like i'll walk into the living room and we have a big tv in my living room out of way audio huh oh you're shouting out the youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> and he'll just be watching these videos and they're, they're like long videos oh, yeah like just, 40 minutes each <laughs> yeah and he's just watching them about how to do sound and i'm like what is that yeah but he i'm he he puts the work in i'm just gonna say you do put the work mm -hmm. in yeah and that's something too, and something that like I sort of realize as well, is since I like don't think like since I put so much work in, mm -hmm. I still don't feel like I'm like a hundred percent. You know, it's something I have like like perfectionist mentality, especially with like production and all that, especially at my church. Especially at your church. Uh huh. Sorry. <laughs> I'll you guys later. And then um. I'll you guys later. <laughs> so yeah, I have this mentality, and it's not perfect. I'm like. That's true. You'll be getting mad at I me. I get pissed. You get mad at me all at the time. Everything. Just, <laughs> not perfect. <sighs> and yeah. So I never really thought, and I still don't think I'm, I, I think, I know I'm pretty good, but I'm still not at that level. Yeah, yeah. So I never like over exaggerate, especially when it's like a, like a job or for example, somebody asked me like my skills, like, yeah, I'm pretty good. And then my sister's, oh yeah, he's the best. <laughs> I did that in Brazil. Can yeah, I say Yeah, yeah. That's what we I was were, We were at a retreat in Brazil my for my cousin's church. It was a youth retreat. And then um, the sound there, like, it's, um, you know, it's a, a retreat location. They don't have the good. And also in Brazil, this stuff is very expensive. So um, most churches in Brazil will get, like, how do I say this? 
not bad quality things, but they'll get what's most accessible. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times what's most accessible in Brazil it's... is not the same quality that we're going to mm-hmm. get here. You know, if stuff is very, a lot more expensive, like tr- quadruple the price. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And if you sure. go on my uh, Instagram, you'll that's the first post. That's where... Gabe the sound guy, That's follow him. Gabe the sound guy, if you haven't followed it already. Yeah. So it. we were in Brazil and then, you know, we were observing the difference. And I feel like we became very grateful for what we have after going to Brazil. Honestly. After seeing the difference. Yeah, but like I kind of fell in love with that. Really? Kind of, yeah, it's like, it's humbling, but it's also like it's Brazil and it's like. Oh no, I get the Brazilian culture is like. And I also like have fun with this like analog stuff. Like it's it's just fun because uh, at my church, I have, it's all digital. Mm-hmm. Everything's digital, honestly. <laughs> And it's just fun just to go back to the basics where instead yeah. of like gay compressor, you have just EQ. Mm-hmm. Right. And you have and to gain. Do- but yeah, so we were at the retreat and then for some reason, my brother was sitting at the table with the pastor. It was just talking to him. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were eating. Like we know. were having dinner and he was just talking to the pastors. And then I was looking for him because I was just like by myself. And then I found him and he was like, and they were like, oh my gosh, come sit down and talk with us. And I was like, okay. So I sat down with the pastors and then we started talking and then I started hyping up my brother because my brother is quiet about what mm-hmm. he does. Mm. So, and then he was like, oh yeah, like what do you guys do at your church? And I was like, my brother plays this, my brother plays the saxophone, my brother does sound, my brother does this. And I was like hyping him up because I'm so proud of him. Like I just want to tell everyone what he does. And my, my, my older sisters will get what I mean. Get what I mean. <laughs> and then the pastor's wife goes, oh, you're a sound guy. Do you want to like work with our sound? Wait, because- no, no, no. You got to say like, you gotta talk about the pastor talking about the sound quality. Oh, right, right, right. So then the pastor, the pastor's wife was like, Oh, yeah, because like our sound is kind of bad, right? Ah, and Gabriel goes, that's it. And it was so funny. Straight away. He didn't mean to say it. I, I was like, Finally, they agreed that like I can like say that it, the sound is bad because I've been like dying to say it. Because like, I, it, it's funny. He didn't say it to like say it, but it just came out the way. It, yeah. And she goes, yeah, It's kind of bad. Because, yeah, yeah, it is. I and then she started, we all started laughing. And then she goes, Wait, do you actually want to like work with our sound? And he was like, sure. Uh, yeah. So then the rest of the retreat, there's like a day left. Or like a day or two. A day or two left. And then he like spent the whole time fixing the sound and like messing with it. Mm-hmm. And that's how it went. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I do it. hype him up more than he hypes himself up. And I always yeah. will just say. And I don't it's try not to hype myself fair. up to try not to be prideful as well because mm-hmm. it is kind of hard, but it's not, it's really possible. It's possible, but it's hard. So right. mm-hmm. I, I avoid it as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Also, Bible also says to avoid temptations and like yeah, pride yeah. is also a temptation if you think about it because... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm tend to be like, yeah, I'm all that, I'm all that, but it's just gonna bring me down, just like it right brought down Satan, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So yeah, where was it? So right, and then uh, I'm not gonna say where, but with uh, like the sound and all that, I was kind of brought like let down and like always reminded that like, yeah, you're a kid, you're not all that. I was, mm. and then like after like I'm not gonna say who obviously. But I don't even think they even mean to do it. I think they wanted to more help me. But it kind of brought me down. I was like, yeah, I'm not really all that. Mm-hmm. And they kind of like left me, but I lie. Uh, like left me but to the side. <laughs> uh-huh. And that like really like affected me and it like, got into my mind a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm not all that. But then it switched up like, no, I'm here, I'm doing I'm doing this for the Lord. So Wait, so what you mean to say is that kind of those negative um comments about you about your age brought you down to like not want to do sound anymore no that's what it's just like brought me down to like this motivate me just remind me that like i'm not all that and oh like, make you feel like you're not good enough like you can't yeah, do it like you're yeah. not old enough okay. but i yeah. s- mm-hmm. somehow so persevered i'm mm-hmm. proud of you mm-hmm. and then like it actually like brought me down as well not brought me down but like my mentality kind of shifted to like yeah i'm not all that and then i started being that but i didn't know that if that makes sense. I don't, I, okay, so what you're trying yeah, to say I'm, is that I get it. You you kind of had these people telling you that you weren't good enough and all that stuff. And so in your mind, you kind of doubted yourself, doubted what the, the calling that God had for you. But then over time, you decided to work better on yourself and you became what they said that you weren't. Yes and no. Okay. I was what I didn't say I was, for example. Like. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I that understand. makes sense. I understand. I like, mm-hmm. I, like, I forgot like who I was and like what I could do. Mm-hmm. And then I always like downgraded myself if that makes sense right but then um actually it was at that retreat out of nowhere uh i just finished well worship and then the guy goes hey can i pray for you like obviously mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm not gonna recu- Re- refuse refuse the prayer yeah, yeah. and then after the prayer he was just talking to me and like god was like using him 
tremendously and i was like you know my <laughs> mind was just because like the things that the god he was saying like it was crazy and then one thing he said is like don't let anybody let you down including yourself wow and then hey you <laughs> slap in the face <laughs> slap in the face because i realized like even at that retreat i kind of like downgraded myself mm-hmm. especially to the pastor because i didn't say anything because uh-huh. i'm also scared of failure as well that's something mm-hmm. and you know that's also a, a way of pride you know that right yep. mm-hmm. being afraid of fail is also another way of being prideful because when you're afraid of fail you only want to win and it could be for many reasons it could be to prove to yourself that you're good at what you do it could also be to prove others what you're what you're good at what you do so when you fail it's like man i don't want to fail because i don't like it sucks and no one likes to lose guys like let's be real no no one likes to lose no one likes to accept defeat the bible also says no one likes to be i'm pretty sure i think the bible says i don't know if the bible says it but um that no one likes to be like corrected no one likes to be like a fool doesn't want to be corrected a fool there you go a fool doesn't I'm doesn't like sure. to be i think that's biblical uh-huh. that a fool doesn't like to be corrected if it's not just just fact check while you're editing yeah, I might. <laughs> but um yeah so it, it means a lot what you're saying because um when you um when you're afraid to fail it's a it it's a sh- you know it's a sign that you're becoming prideful mm-hmm. in the sense i think you also be with if you're afraid to fail you're also doubting what god has for you exactly which is a way of pride because and that at that point you're kind of thinking that you handle everything on your own exactly you know what i'm saying and you said something really interesting that and i saw an instagram actually an instagram quote the other day it was like the only person that can stop you your greatest enemy Oh, we know that our greatest enemy is Satan. But other than that, our greatest enemy can also be ourselves. Oh, yeah. Because we can stop ourselves. You're your own worst enemy. Exactly. We could end up stopping ourselves for what not only that we want to do, but what God wants Mm -hmm. us to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so we also have to be very careful with that. So when you mentioned the whole um, that you were doubting yourself, that you and the pastor said that, like, don't let anyone stop you, including yourself. It it was a leader. It was a leader. Oh, pastor. Sorry. Um. Yeah, it makes perfect sense Sorry, because I'm just, I'm just going on D and D. It makes perfect sense a lot. So continue. Yeah, sir. and honestly, that's kind of it. But I'm trying to see if there's more. There's more, but can't think of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, uh, fear of like failure. That's pretty much it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like some fear of like I'm the thing is like when it's something new. I'm scared to like I don't know what to expect, so I'm mm-hmm. scared if it's gonna like be something I can't do or anything like that. And you want to be able to do it? Of of course, yeah. I mean, it's for example, if it's like a job or anything, I'm like getting paid. It has to be like serious, and yeah, yeah. I need to do my best. And like, what if I can't do my best? You know. And that's, mm. So then you mm. kind of do you let those thoughts overtake your mind? Do you think? Um, somewhat, sometimes. Yeah, it's like hard because. I'm an extreme overthinker. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I was probably overthinking in the middle of this episode. If I'm being yeah, honest. you were. I saw. Yeah. See, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. I'm a yeah. I literally went like this because I'm a big overthinker, and so. that's probably something that um I also struggle with. Mm-hmm. But it's something that like helped like cons- uh, help of uh, feed these thoughts of like that I'm not might not be able to do it. But at the end, I just pray that Lord. I know your will. I know your plans will be done in my life. Mm-hmm. So as much as that, it worries me. As much as it, like it's scary. Like maybe I don't think I'm enough. I know that at least one day I'm gonna be able to do what the Lord wants. Amen. The image is gonna be with sound related stuff. <laughs> <laughs> my passion, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm trying to think of more things to say, but is that all that you wrote down too? I'm pretty sure. Check. yeah oh i told you i was like man he, man came with the paper and everything i was like Let's go. <laughs> something that also like helped me realize that not being prideful and like how you sh- instead of being prideful you should like help one another because mm. we are all like one in christ mm-hmm. i'm not gonna say names i'm gonna say it very like uh like without details mm-hmm. this is what i'm gonna say right now because don't want to expose nobody <laughs> but there's a certain someone who i try to love as much as possible and like i'm always there for him if he needs anything but he struggles with a lot of pride 
And to the point where he was like kind of like defaming me and like trying to like bring me down. I remember, mm-hmm. yeah. And then I was like pissed. I was actually like, <laughs> no, I was like thinking to myself, like, yeah, I don't hate anybody, but this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I started realizing like his pride, he started like falling. Like, like I like didn't like, I tried my best to be patient. There was times where I like, kind of yelled at him mm-hmm. a little bit, but. <laughs> it's a work in progress. It's a work, work in, in progress. progress. And um, I started realizing that, yeah, I'm, I'm in my uh, space and he's in his space. He tries to come into after me, but I don't let him. And he started like falling and he was like falling. I mean, like he let the pride get it to him mm-hmm. and he started losing things and mm-hmm. losing things. And I'm pretty sure he was probably going through something strong mentally and all that. And then I realized that, yeah. I had also had the opportunity to be like, ha ha, ha ha, you failed. But then <laughs> but then I realized that, no, that the Lord also called us to help one another and to lift one another up and to show each other love, show each other love, just right. like has, God has forgiven us, has shown us love. And show people mercy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Show people mercy. And then I was like, no, as much as I want to like shove it in his face, I have to humble myself as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have to help him as well like be nice to him <laughs> right and not to be like haha right not like be, see him as a laughing stock or yeah. do to him what he did to you exactly. and i feel like you do do a good job with him specifically because i know i don't know gabe i just feel like you're a very loving person in general yeah that's i don't know like i you are with anyone that you meet you always look for the good in people you always try to be nice to them always gabe is very a very kind-hearted person yeah and i feel like even with lord i feel like even with this person like i feel like you do let the holy spirit move in your heart to him and i feel like your vision this is what i see the way that you treat i see the way you treat him i see the way you act with him i feel like you do let the holy spirit kind of use you to be a light in his life you know which i think that that should be our focus we have to allow the Holy Spirit to use us as vessels to bless yeah. other people as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If we see, go ahead. That's also another key of defeating pride is mm-hmm. when you're going out of your way to help someone else. Yeah. Because how did um, people like, I mean, let's use a perfect example here. Jesus, right? Jesus, we, we forget that Jesus was also human, but this whole time here on earth, what did he do? He served us right he served us and that's why in philippians 2 one of my favorite chapters in the bible it says to have the attitude of christ because he because the verse before that says um don't be selfish and like put other thoughts as if they were your own put others interests first as if they were also your own because when you're doing that you're you know when you're actually caring about what people are going through when you're caring about what people think when you want to help other people when you want to serve other people you're going out of your way of being like okay i don't want like like, forget me for a second. Let me help this certain someone. And listen, y'all, sometimes it could be, like, sometimes we say it's easy to serve people, but sometimes you're going to have to serve someone that you don't want to serve. Right. And then that's when your pride gets tested for real. Are you actually going to serve that person or are you too prideful to help that mm. person? So I think a lot of times we have to be, um, these situations kind of test us in, in a ways of, like, how is my pride? I think, like, the way I see it, I feel like we all have a scale, if that makes sense. All of us have a scale. And there's a certain level, a certain peak to where our pride starts and to where it could be. And if it like this right here is like, no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? And like maybe some of us are up here. Some of us are over here. Some of us are, are, are good are down here, which is good. Um, but, you know, throughout time, sometimes it may go up, sometimes it may go down. And we have to always be very careful on it where getting too high scale. we have to be very careful on where we are with that scale because if it gets too high then we're going to start to lose ourselves and i'm saying this also because gabe like what you're saying i relate to a lot personally and i feel like a lot of people definitely relate to this too um you, when you reach to a certain level of pride you start to lose yourself like mm-hmm. you literally start to lose c- control of your mind you start to lose uh, yourself of who you are and it's a very dangerous place to be because you may say things that you're not supposed to say. You may act in ways that you shouldn't have acted. And that's why, you know, when we're acting like um, selflessly, like helping someone, serving someone, 
that's a way to kind of put us in check. That's a way to put us in a humble place so that we won't do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you ha you having to deal with a specific person. There were times you were like, oh man, like, you know, like you want to get that payback. You want to get that revenge because that's what our flesh wants. But the spirit desires otherwise. So we always have to just, like you said, Go with what the spirit wants. Go with the flow of the spirit, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Gabe, trust me, like what you're saying, like for me, I i I love it a lot. Mm -hmm. I really do appreciate it. And yeah, I try to do my best in all I do because that's what the Lord like wants. Mm-hmm. I, I know what the verse is. Whatever you do, it. may you do for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You can Everything you do, yeah, do it as if it were for the Lord. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I meant to say, but I always try to <laughs> Sorry, the door just opened. We all got scared. <laughs> yeah. I always try to do my best to, you know, for the Lord and all that and try not to be prideful as well because... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's something that I was thinking about when Nick's saying. Then I forgot it. Then I just remembered. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there's a certain situation in church where um, I was like, you know what? Let me be a little bit prideful. <laughs> Did you actually? Not like that, but I was like... Mm -hmm. And then, so yeah. And then they asked me to fix something. And then there was like a bunch of people in the room, and it was like, "Oh, what is? I have no, no, no clue how to even touch it." Mm -hmm. And I had to figure out how to use the controls. And I was like, "Oh, let's go! I got it!" It's like, "Yo, y'all saw that? Y'all saw that? <laughs> I did that!" And then the girl goes, "Oh, be careful with pride." Juiz, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The second that sh I said I did it, and then she told me, I was like, "Oh, she's right." <laughs> <laughs> and then. That was back to my old ways. <laughs> it was like a it was like a funny moment, but like also like, oh wait. Like, yeah. That person was right. <laughs> like, let me keep myself in check. Yeah, yeah because if not, I'm gonna be, you know, Proverbs eleven too. I'm gonna be a disgrace. Yeah. Like, you know. Pride is extremely dangerous, and that's pretty much all I can say. And there's also no point in being prideful if we're all like one in Christ, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Because mm. You know, something that I'm pretty sure you guys say here a lot is, oh, uh, it's right here. <laughs> Where is it? Right. In God's eyes, we are all his servant. And at the end, when uh, we die and name it, Jesus will go to heaven. He's going to say, well done, my good and faithful, faithful, faithful servant. servant. Not well done, my good and faithful sound guy, lights mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Musician. Musician, you Musician. know. Mm -hmm. So volleyball player <laughs> <laughs> so god isn't gonna um uh he's he's not gonna like call us by our status, status. he's by gonna call our, us what by, we do in the world yeah he's gonna call us by a servant because we are here to serve god mm -hmm. that's why he created us as well so really i mean especially in like god's eyes we're all like the same thing mm -hmm. so there's no, really no point in being prideful if you're i'm exactly like you not exactly but right. in a sense i'm exactly like nick ania you too whoever is watching this mm -hmm. i'm exactly like you guys because god made us all equal in his image genesis something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's also something i just wrote that i wrote down that's over really there. beautiful gabe i think that's a really good point i had never thought about it like that being prideful it's pointless because to god we're all the same yeah he sees us all as his children he sees us equally yeah you know what's another way of defeating pride knowing your worth in christ because mm -hmm. then you know where uh i i read about this it actually made a preaching similar that t touched a bit on pride and when i was researching about pride it said that one of the roots of pride is insecurity oh yeah insecurity mm -hmm. is one of the roots of pride. if anything it's the main root of pride because if you're being prideful deep down you feel insecure like for example why do they always say like um like for example like the like if you ever watch those movies, like of the bully always bullying that little kid, and like some wise guy will come in the movies, like, hey man, that bully actually has been through it. And it's okay. true. The reason why that person had to be a bully was because that person was hurt. And deep down, that person is so insecure to the point that they need to belittle other people and lift feel, themselves uh -huh, higher. In order to feel better. So about that, themselves. in another way, is also pride. So, yeah, man. So I, I, I really love love this this episode i was even talking about it to anine before this episode even came to be i was like what i really loved about this was that it's it's showing a more vulnerable side of us uh mm -hmm. specifically uh you you know yeah something. um like you said it yourself like it's something you still struggle with and it's okay i feel like a lot of people said 
we all struggle with it Amen. and i feel like a lot of people nowadays are are specifically i see a lot of christians who try to act like they're superman who try to oh, act yeah. like they're superwoman i don't go through that it's like uh, i don't go through yeah, that yeah you do and it's like don't even no oh, actually yeah, you know what if you don't praise god if praise you don't god. praise god well, but i think it's a lie to say that you've never gone through that you've never even exp- again it's not impossible mm-hmm. but most people do and it's not talked about at all mm-hmm. or enough in my opinion or people aren't vulnerable enough vulnerable enough so then when people do need help they kind of think that they're that's why they the, shouldn't receive help they think that they're completely wrong it's like mm-hmm. yes you're wrong but it's okay. God is still going to forgive you. God can still work in your heart. There are ways to overcome it. But if we don't talk about it, how are you going to know that? That's why the Bible says confess your sins to one another and you will be saved. Because like there's power in confessing mm-hmm. your vulnerabilities, your what's going on inside of you. Because I feel like a lot of people are also hiding what's inside of them. Yeah. And that's what's also making you worse. You know, like Gabe, for example, if he had never opened up about his pride, he probably would have been the most prideful person we've ever seen in the face of planet earth you know what i'm saying so it's very very important that we keep ourselves in check and guys um i don't know if if, is there anything else yeah there's something else that i thought about right now is uh, one of my friends actually like told me this and then i was like yo that's true uh something about he has a he's young and he has a car Mm -hmm. It's, it's gonna make sense but something he's like talks about is he like when he got his car he started like talking about like yeah i have my car and he was like like flexing it and like being all like prideful about it and then what started happening is he started uh like having a lot of issues with his car but then when he stopped like being prideful about his car and like kept quiet and like not revealed his like secrets to anybody mm-hmm. for example like, secret is his car his car stopped having as much problems mm-hmm. and that's like something as well like that shows like also words have power as well mhm but mainly is like prideless pride will like that that's an example i just gave pride will like destroy you i guarantee you it's in the bible <laughs> <laughs> and there's something else too i think but i probably forgot <laughs> okay if you remember you can say it again it was what? yeah I, I forgot <laughs> it's okay that's not a big deal but is that do you think that that's where we can conclude honestly pretty much yeah yeah think so well bro, amen praise the should, lord i'm gonna just say this who knows who knows this could be god using me right now i don't know you should make a series about that one day in the future like talking about pride because it's so? definitely something that he has clearly a lot of experience uh-huh. in. and i feel who knows? like a positive experience too where you were able to overcome exactly. it exactly let it over you make you like completely. a se- like who knows you end up becoming one of those pastors in the future there's like <laughs> those people in the future that i see talk like doing like a like a step-by-step <laughs> series of how to defeat pride <laughs> step, step, step one don't be prideful. Step one, don't be pride just no, that but step i do think not that what's so beautiful about your story as well is the fact that you were able to catch it from the beginning mm-hmm. and you didn't let it get too far ahead do you know how many people don't even realize their pride yeah before? exactly and the fact that you did at such a young age like this and i feel like it's because you always had the mentality of i'm doing this for the lord and i want to make sure that i'm in check yeah. i feel like that is what you know how you were able to let god touch your heart yeah something like god like put in my heart as well so exactly I, so, so he keeps me in check as well he you keeps know? you in check and i think that you also are open to that yeah because god gives us free will you know what i'm saying he's so powerful that he decided to give us free will he decided yeah. to allow us to make our own choices and the moment that you decide that he's going to start working in your heart you know exactly. what i'm saying yeah something i just remembered that i was about to talk about yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> thank goodness we didn't conclude it no i had a feeling you were going to say it that that's why i wanted yeah. to go on a little bit but uh pride uh, not pride <laughs> sorry um when you guys are talking about vulnerability and being vulnerable if i'm being honest if you guys also know me i am not extremely reserved yeah i keep everything he's not vulnerable at all Mm-mm. he doesn't say anything to us no like he'll even... be crying the entire day gabe what's wrong oh i'm just Nothing. tired I don't want to talk about <laughs> yeah I, it's or, or i'm just tired mm-hmm. yeah but i'm his sister and he thinks that he can hide stuff from me i know your face gabe i know when you're not okay <laughs> yeah but it's something that i just i just i don't know i just can't exp- say it uh-huh. i can't you know something i also struggle with in this episode also like realized that like yeah i was prideful mm-hmm. i didn't realize how prideful i was until you actually said it yeah until i actually like yeah. s- like studied my life <laughs> you know but it's good that you know it's, yeah, it's really good saying. to look back like I, I do that a lot too to keep myself in check sometimes it's a look back 
like look back where i think another thing we need to start doing too and this can be done either through yourself or the holy spirit could reveal to you or even through things like therapy like can i just say really quick therapy is very important if you guys are going through something because um i feel like a lot of christians underestimate therapy and i feel like there are things that are going on that therapy could definitely help, can mm-hmm. definitely get you on the right track. That doesn't mean, you know, ignore God, ignore the Holy doesn't Spirit. Doesn't mean, exactly. That should be number one in your exactly. life. Exactly. And I also heard a preaching about this too. A lot of people are also running to that. Yeah, and not, and running, running away God. from God. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do therapy, make sure that's like, like down here because God always comes first. Yeah, I feel like we both had that experience too where we, mm-hmm. when we both need a therapist at different times we search for a christian therapist yeah so that the holy spirit could always be the center mm-hmm. yeah i feel like also if we're gonna uh like look for a therapist pray about it first because mm-hmm. i know someone who um had like went to therapy but instead of like helping her it like made her worse yeah ma- not made her worse but like she started suppressing her feelings while going to therapy oh mm-hmm. got it so yeah that's just i just thought about just always keep it keep god in the center of it and make sure god will take you to the right therapist mm-hmm. and all that Just, very true very true yeah but i'm assuming this is where we are going to conclude I think so too is yeah. are we going to do the the I don't one like we have time yeah the one piece of advice oh, one piece of advice oh, yeah oh gabe do you want to give one? i thought you were going to say something completely no, different no, that's no. why i said that we had no, enough time. I, I knew we were going to have time for that but gabe as you know, you've been with us for a very long time. <laughs> he has been with us since day one. Since literally day one. As you know, we always end every single one of our episodes with one piece gonna of advice. It's going to be don't be prideful. For the, <laughs> it's just going to be don't be prideful. <laughs> yeah. But Gabe, I'll let you take it away. Yeah. One piece of advice, oh, man. For, if it's going to be my testimony episode, it's going to be a different mm-hmm. uh-huh. something that, like, about my life. But mm-hmm. obviously for today, it's going to be be humble, not be <laughs> yeah, just don't be prideful just make sure you're 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 make sure you're humble make sure pride doesn't get into your head because if it will you will unfortunately fall just like satan fell from heaven mm-hmm. that is serious this is like it's dangerous it's something that you don't you could not realize it's dangerous and you just be careful mm-hmm. not be prideful because it will take you down a path you will n- you probably won't be able you you will be able to but just something that'll be hard f- to get out of and mm-hmm. yeah be humble humble humbleness is no there's just like a saying something what i don't know there's something like a saying with humbleness like be humble i don't know there's a lot of sayings <laughs> yeah, so i can't so, really there's a there's a lot of humble okay. quotes humble. out there and uh so i think the bible like talks about like people with humble hearts like but god will bless those yeah, humble like hearts. God blesses those who are humble. And, yeah. Jesus, mm-hmm. and Jesus was a, such an example of humility, and He wants us to be humble. You mm-hmm. know, like yeah. for example, Jesus, Jesus, the Creator of the Son of God. Uh, yeah, His Son. He sat down with the disciples. I think mm-hmm. that that's uh, for example, oh, uh, the tax collector. I think the tax collector. Oh yeah. Uh, Matthew? Matthew? No, not Matthew. Uh, oh, oh, you think of Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus. There, Zacchaeus. You there you go. Zac- no, not Zachariah. Zacchaeus. 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 I forget oh. in English they call him Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Yeah. yeah. Jesus was humble enough to sit down with Zacchaeus, someone who everybody not even hated. That. Mm-hmm. Say, hey, I'm gonna go to your house. Yeah. And, like sleep there and like and spend like, time spend with you. Time with like, mm-hmm. dude, you know how much like humbleness you gotta have to do something like that. People who like someone. You don't do that. Yeah. Let's be so for real. Let's be for real. Yeah. We don't do that. And someone like a tax collector. My dad actually brought up the, the story of Zacchaeus the other day. He was like, yeah. dude, do you know how crazy it is that Jesus was like, I'm going to go to your house. Someone who was looked so poorly upon uh-huh. from all the people there. And then Jesus comes out of nowhere and goes, I'm going to go to your house, bro. And Let's have s- a chat together. I'm going to mm-hmm. spend time with you. And I'm going to spend time with you. And he transforms Zacchaeus' heart. Exactly. exactly. And that's how we should be living mm-hmm. too. Moral yeah. of the story. Yeah, that's the piece of advice. Be like Jesus. Be humble. Amen. Be like Amen. Jesus. Be humble. Can I be the title of the, the thumbnail? Be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. Be, be humble. humble. Amen. Amen. Gabe, Yo, I, I love you. My so title was humbleness and trust will take you places, but that's, that's not, not what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you let the Holy Spirit <laughs> move. Cool. Gabe, I love you so much, and I'm so love proud you of too, you. Ania. Thank you. You heard? He oh, actually to, cares oh, about to, me. I forgot to mute that. Oh. <laughs> 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 he cares about me. No. But seriously, you did amazing. I'm so proud of you. I'm so thank proud you. of. Thank you for this opportunity. This really last oh, minute opportunity. Yeah, it, it amazing. So we we literally Nick and I were going out to eat on Sunday, and we were just talking about the episode. 
I think we had talked about it previously. We had we, talked, we talked about, about it like Friday, right? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, Nick, I think we should bring Gabe on the podcast this week. And he was like, I don't know, because I know how Gabe preaches. I know what he, he has to mm-hmm. tell. You don't know as much. I've never seen yeah, Gabe preach. I have. I have. Never, yeah. And I was like, no, trust me. Like Gabriel is a man of God. Like I, he's going to be I used. Now I see it. This is not yeah. going to be. And then you were like, oh, let me take the weekend to pray about it. Mm-hmm. And then on Sunday we were like, no, let's do it. We called Gabriel, and he's like, oh. Yeah, I did not expect it. <laughs> <laughs> we told him like what well, the idea that we had and all that. Yeah. And I'm just so grateful that you said yes and that you were able to bless so many lives. Bless yeah. my life. Maybe Jesus, uh, somebody, at least one person was impacted by this. Amen, amen. That's amen. all that matters. Amen. And thank you guys so much for watching. As always, remember that every Thursday we have an, a brand new episode. 4, 4 p.m. PM. Always. Next week. Um, I'm not going to say it just in case. We have a case. very special episode. Yeah, we have it planned. We didn't record it yet. Wait, but, but they might know what it is. They can use context clues if they you, want, but I'm not going to say it. You guys so. went to school. Use context clues. <laughs> you guys are going to see. If you guys <laughs> are was... smart enough, you guys are going to know exactly what <laughs> next Thursday is. God. And you guys are going to know. Did you say you go to school? You go to <laughs> Yes. If you guys went to school, you guys know what context clues are. And if you guys use your brains, next week is a okay, special okay. day. What, what's context clues? I'm not going to say it. That's all I'm going to say. Are you asking that for real? Yeah, what's context clues? <laughs> oh, I, was I was like, wait, how do you not know? Okay. Next Thursday, we have a very special yes, we episode. We have it planned, so I can't confirm yet 100%. Mm-hmm. But from what we're seeing, God is going to move it in the right direction. Thank and yeah, Jesus. come next week, 4 p.m. It's going to be a great episode. And thank you guys so much for watching. We love y'all so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.